open wide for podcast. Mm-hmm. It's your slop. It's your podcast. It, it is, in fact, what you came here to see, which is, well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters. It has slides. I'm Justin Rosdiak, the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I am Alice Caldwell Kelly, the person who's talking now. My pronouns are she and her. Yay, Liam. Yay, Liam. Hello, I am Liam Anderson. My pronouns are he, him. I'm the guy swearing at you for the podcast Twitter. Oh, uh, that narrows okay. it down. Yes. Yeah, well, because there's sound quality isn't good enough. If you're not even an audio file. <laughs> and this is why I don't tell anyone that I'm an audio file. Yeah, I only fucking listen to Well, There's Your Problem on vinyl. Yeah, True. it's it's weird. We actually make Roz press it himself, and he's not very good at it. <laughs> well, just, just to, it just really to, sucks when it's like a three hour episode, and each one takes <laughs> like four sides. I love the idea of doing one of those beautiful massive like, disc. Quad, yeah, yeah, quad yeah. disc. We actually also release on laser disc. Uh, mm-hmm. We, we oh, record a, a lossless version. We record a flak version of each of these, and then we just keep it for ourselves. We don't let yeah. you listen to it because you don't deserve it. You don't exactly. listen. Yeah, uh, we the, will. The be- laser disc version is great because you can use that scroll wheel to go individually through each frame, which is identical to the previous one because it's a slideshow. <laughs> mm-hmm. I uh, I do like the idea of us releasing on title, <laughs> like just just in flack or something. Oh yeah, you- if you, if you want that extra crisp, Alice, you can get that. Uh, you don't yes. deserve crisp, Liam. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You deserve whatever the two dollars a month you pay. <laughs> you go get whatever Liam we have in stock. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, this yeah. is America. We don't call it crisp. We call it a chip. Mm. Chip Alice. A chip yeah. Liam. Yes. Oh, a chip Liam, dude. I Alice. Do they have fried pickle chips? Or crisps. Um, Ugh. like over in Glasgow. They're just about making their debut now that we're getting more American fast food chains. Like I think Smashburger has them. Uh, yeah, and obviously, as as a transgender woman, I I love a pickle and I love a fried food, so this is perfect for me. I I am a big big fried pickle chip guy. Roz, do you like a fried pickle chip? I like a fried pickle chip. It's very okay. good. Yes, you got to get that like garlic mayo going on. This is why I weigh nine hundred pounds. Yeah, I at the at the, at the we can't do the live show all in person because we'd all have to roll each other up the hill. <laughs> yeah. Broke down ninety eight Explorer. Yeah, the, the the thing about the the live show is we can't do one in Pennsylvania for a while because the three of us exceed any safe weight limit for the venue collectively. <laughs> Oh man, the floors aren't racing for that I was, shit. I, yeah. I was feeling good about myself today too. <laughs> yeah, about to say, here we are being fat phobic to ourselves. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Listen, if you can't be prejudiced against yourself, who the hell can you be prejudiced against? That's my philosophy. Well, so- someone told me a couple weeks ago that uh, bicycle infrastructure was fat genocide. So we covered that pretty well last episode. <laughs> yeah, um, they blocked you. They blocked yeah. me too. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. live I in think Philly. they got the triple. They blocked us. They blocked all of us. Uh, yes. So you know, I I love when I just go to some random person like I uh, random person thing and then just get blocked at the next instant. And I'm like, ah, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what it makes me feel more warm inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's well, the guy who told me to eat shit, you fat fuck, when I critiqued Barstool. And then blocked me. And I was Barstool like, you fuck- has no fucking standing to be calling anyone fat. Like I Barstool like, you fans, fu- you fucking yeah. coward. Like, no, come out here and fight. Like, maybe I'll sit think- on you. Maybe I'll eat you. Who knows? Come out here and find out. Beat your fate, <laughs> I do, asshole. I, I, I do think that's uh, that is um, that as a uh, sort of um, method of uh, interacting with people is not a great one. You insult them, then then you block them. It's like, well, you know, pres- you, you want to. You want to prove that you're able to withstand, you know, the retort or whatever. I, I don't know why you insult and then block. That's that's kind of you know shitty. The, the, uh, also, shitty. The, the, move yeah. the move of then posting Bushido is like uh, uh, is like the mute, the gentleman's mute, where you just let them tire themselves out for as long as it takes until they realize that you're not responding to them. See also really? our pinned comments. Yeah, mm. that guy. I don't know if he's still going as of today, but he. Yeah, you were probably right in making me delete the retort from the podcast account, but like, yes, <laughs> I was complaining to Corinne about that, and I was like, Ros Rod, made me delete the account, even though made you delete the comment, even though it wasn't that bad. And she's like, he does have a point, and I was like, no, he doesn't. Ross never has a point. Only Liam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, what you see on the screen here are the remains of a truck. 
It looks in fine shape. I mean, I've seen worse. <laughs> Yes, and it's I grew in, up in central Pennsylvania. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've seen in, some shit. It's in a hole, mm. right? Aren't in the caves. All? Yeah, um, it's not supposed to be like that. Oh, uh, today we're going to talk about the 1999 Mont Blanc tunnel fire, for which primary sources were impossible to find. <laughs> very irritating. <laughs> stuff that was supposed to be in the public domain was stuff I had to pay for to look at. And I refuse to do that on principle. I'm yeah, not, not going to pay to view a public domain article. <laughs> very, very poorly reported, especially in English. Uh, like, yes. you, you Google this stuff, and like the uh, you know the biggest the biggest uh, responses now are like uh, some journalist going, "Oh yeah, I wrote this story about this that uh, I actually turned out wasn't true at all." Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, well, like, we'll thanks. That's that. helpful. That's very helpful. But first, we have to do. The goddamn news. To make a Northwest Passage. Uh, uh, we, uh, listen, uh, I, my current obsession, like the guy who's gotten under my skin on Twitter the most recently, is the guy who's like, actually the Freedom Convoy in Canada has a left-wing class character. Oh, no, it doesn't. Nazis. The, no, the, those, doesn't. those Nazi flags, you know, they just get there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah just, uh, uh, they just don't, don't worry National about socialists. Uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me as I stick my hands up my well, own like, butt and he, smell he, it. He managed to get the perfect tweet, which was like, "Oh, I'd like to see you keep a protest without like Nazi flag free." They just they just generate themselves, and it's I, like 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 through so, budding. So, so far, one hundred percent success rate on uh, on not having any Nazi flags at anything yeah, I've, been, you, to, I've been to. I've been to a lot of Nazi. demos in my life, and yeah. I don't think I've seen Nazi flags except by the people we were fighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just like those right wing trolls who uh, go to like uh, a big uh, DSA protest and then they unfurl the banner that says that has DSA shaking hands with Nambla. You know, it's the same thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, do they're doing like ops to discredit. CSIS is trying to discredit the Freedom Convoy by bringing in Nazi flags that they had from home from their Ukrainian grandpas. There was a, there was a, uh, an article on I think Barry Weiss's Substack. Oh Christ! Oh, uh, Jesus, what, man! Why what, do you what, even what know the, that? What do the truckers actually want? And the opening paragraph was something like. Well, the Freedom of Convoy has a lot of diverse, different types of people, uh -huh. right? Not all of You're them are opposed whites. to just white, uh, yeah. and and they're not all opposed Nazis, to vaccine Nazis, mandates, bulls. right? Uh, oh, it's okay. not only about uh -huh. vaccine mandates. And then she, oh, okay. they proceed to interview sixteen people who all are mad at va vaccine mandates. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and like Barry, they're not they're not mad at vaccine mandates for the same reason you are. They're not on some like Emily Oster, uh, we have to get the schools open because I hate my children shit. No, this is just <laughs> purely Justin Trudeau is a gay communist who is gonna inject me with the 5G. I don't yes. want to. Therefore, I'm gonna park my privately owned, mind you, tractor trailer on the Ambassador Bridge, which is what we're seeing here, right? Yes. So what happened was they don't—they're not actually parking on the uh, Ambassador Bridge. They're blocking it at the end of the Ambassador Bridge, and uh -huh. all these trucks full of people who aren't in the Freedom Convoy are stuck on the Ambassador Bridge. The Ambassador Bridge, of course, links Detroit to Windsor, and 25% of the trade of trade between Canada and the United States by value, not by weight or by volume, but by value. No one ever talks about that part. Goes over this bridge. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, all the maple syrup coming south, and then all of whatever Canada buys from you uh, coming north. Lots of auto parts, I believe. Oh, um, that makes okay. sense, because yeah. Ford has a factory right over the bridge in Windsor, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, and this, uh, I, I, I thought this was a, a, an interesting demonstration of, um, you know, I, I, people move to like, we moved to trucking absolutely everything. Uh, because of a lot of reasons, but one of them was, you know, supposed flexibility of the truck. Yeah, you can take then, another route, right? Yeah, and then it turns out, uh, actually, no. No, this is the only route that trucks can practically take, is over this 92-year-old bridge. Uh, Isn't just there because, another bridge, like, upstream by, like, a it, little bit? Yeah, you, 60 miles up the river, there's the Blue Water Bridge, which is actually oh, yeah. a wider bridge, but it has smaller customs facilities. Ah, okay. So yeah, so you, you got to get on your like Schengen shit. You got to like NAFTA, NAFTA a bit more until there's no border checks at all. 
Honestly, though, um, that was <laughs> make for an intre- some interesting yeah, it's times. Stupid, it's stupid that goods can go across uh, without being held up by, I mean, to a point, without being held up by customs. Uh, but we can't. And you didn't used to need a passport to go to Canada, and now you do for no good fucking reason. Because of 9 11, because of all I, those Canadians. I know why. I know why. Yeah, because 19 Canadians flew That's hijacked yes. planes uh, into yes. into the World Trade Center. Famous Canadian Zachary. What is his name? Zachary Masawi. Zacharias Masawi. Yeah. Zacharias. Yes. There we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Famous famous fan of the Habs. Uh, of course, the Habs <laughs> are a designated terrorist organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just pull the Expo's balaclava down over your face, and then you <laughs> you take over the aircraft. Sure. But uh, yeah, so the the Freedom Convoy or people associated with it are blocking the Ambassador Bridge now. Some of Ford's plants are having to be idled. Um, you know, this has some some knock on effects, but I think it's mostly the automotive industry that's feeling yeah. it. This this um, this is costing like two hundred million dollars a day Canadian. So I don't know what that is. I've got to mute myself. Yeah. I might have a job now. Oh hell yeah, oh boy. Be right back. You're, you're muting yourself from your other job to accept a new job, which is a uh, girl boss. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so this this might be the thing that kills the freedom convoy, right? Because you can you can fuck with the population of a capital city for as long as you want, right? Yeah, uh, that that's that's fine. They don't care about you, you doing you arson you, or hate crimes. You can't you, fuck with the Ford Motor you, Corporation. You, yeah, you, know? you, ca- you <laughs> cannot fuck with the Ford Motor Corporation, and you can't fuck with the money. And I think once you do fuck with the money, you're gonna you're gonna find out very quickly. Um, so Oops, spam. Uh, well, well, at least you're getting your penis enlarged now, so you yes. know, you've got it's, that going for you. Yeah, just uh, they call me Liam Ginormous Schlong Anderson. I, I'm, yeah, absolutely. We're going to introduce you, you as that the whole time. And it definitely it has been frustrating seeing people carry water for the Freedom Convoy, and like these oh, are yeah, real absolutely. working class people. When you know most of them, they're not. These are these are almost entirely people who have the the, the ability to take two weeks off work and bring their truck that they own. To go protest uh, a thousand miles away, you know, a guy who drives for like TFI International or JB Hunt or something like that, they're they're not in this this protest. If you drive a truck for a wage, as opposed to being an owner operator, you would have a hell of a time trying to participate in the uh, Freedom Convoy because I imagine the guy who monitors the GPS on your truck is going to give you a phone call and say, "Why are you in Ottawa Ottawa? when you were supposed to be in Winnipeg?" (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is like a small business tyrant sort of like uh, jackery that's happening here. Exactly. They gotta call it a jackery because of the language laws. It's like a it's like a fascist sort of like reactionary riot on the one hand, and a jackery on the other, and you got to use both. Yes. Um, the French. Put, put jackery, step- jackeries weren't weren't fascist. I'm gonna have to like correct myself there. I just no. wanted to use a French word for riot. I am. I, I apparently there's some rumblings about trying to get a United States Freedom Convoy started. I've seen which I that. I assume is going to go straight to Washington D.C. and run down Good every luck. pedestrian they see. Well, well Keir um, Starmer, Keir Starmer, the uh, famous like worm slug person, uh, leader of the opposition here, managed to uh, get like heckled and assaulted by the British Freedom Convoy, which was five guys, but five guys who <laughs> like by accident showed up in the right place to do that. So you know. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Um, if uh, if you live in DC, be prepared to see some morons rolling coal because they're mad about vaccines. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Be be prepared for the fucking uh, the Canadian government and the Ontario provincial government to finally kick the RCMP and the OPP into like acting like it's the Oka crisis and doing some repression finally. Yeah, um, you know they gotta they 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 gotta just think about these people like their as, first as nations if they're people. Indigenous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Need you to turn on the racism. Yeah, exactly. Appreciate that all of us went to the same tasteless joke there. Yeah, exactly. I Good job, I, everyone. I apologize to our indigenous viewers. Um <laughs> All right. In other news. In Sao Paulo, a contractor drilling the new, I believe, line nine of the Sao Paulo Metro accidentally drilled into uh, I believe a sewer cistern. Oh, you don't want to do that. I think it's a combined sewer stormwater infrastructure thing. Um, and as a result, the entire brand new subway tunnel under construction filled with poop. 
<laughs> that's, also, that's, that's not so good. Yeah, it's uh, not ideal. The, you don't want that to happen. Poop is always funny. It is true. Hmm. Um, the all the workers managed funny. to get out. I believe two were treated for contact with sewage. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, not good. But uh, yeah, so this is this is a pretty bad situation to be in if you are trying to build a tunnel and it fills up with poop. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that civil engineering degree really paying dividends, huh, Roz? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't you don't you don't want to do that. Uh line nine apparently I, I, has I, had many issues during construction. Mm-hmm. Um, but recently, um, after a long pause in construction, they restarted it as a public private partnership with a Spanish infrastructure company called Echiona. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, it's uh, Spanish for here is the poop. <laughs> apparently, yeah. What a beautiful language. I I paid uh two hundred fifty thousand dollars to tell you that uh don't put poop in that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's a, called consultancy. It's a pretty good pretty good uh pretty good start. Don't fill the hole with poop when the hole is not supposed to have poop in it. But uh yeah, this is uh this has been a couple of videos of this floating around on like YouTube and Twitter. And, <laughs> so so around. All, I, all I can say is yeah, all I can say is uh wow, that looks expensive. <laughs> Expensive and probably doesn't smell great either. Well, I'd say it's no. a kind of a shitty situation. It is a shitty situation. Yes. <laughs> Low effort poop jokes. Yeah, my bread so, and butter. Um, uh, good luck to these folks. Absolutely. Uh, have, at, have have an interesting moment. Yeah, May I mean, you I, lead I, an you interesting know, life, and is, it's just poop falling from the ceiling. Yeah, this is uh, this is what happens when the poop submerges the fan. Um. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Gross. Poop is funny. Poop is funny. That, that is true. That is true. Yeah. Onward to our neck our, our our subject today. That's the end of the news. All right. This is what a tunnel looks like when it's not full of poop. Mm-hmm. Oh, very clean. Very clean tunnel here. Very clean Someone's tunnel. been through that with a blower. I really appreciate that. Yes, I believe this is the Goddard Base Tunnel. Mm. Um so, now uh, we've talked about tunnels on the show before. One of the things we talk about extensively is how, you know, tunnels, they're good for trains, they're good for boats, sometimes they're good for buses, but usually not. Uh, preferably you have electric buses in mm. there. Uh, what they're the really, re- really good for, though, is individual Teslas. Oh, yeah, individual oh, yeah. Teslas or, like, individual cars driving through the tunnel and trucks full of flammable shit driven by just guys, mm. right? Yeah, for potential freedom convoy adherence. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, it's great to have all these individual vehicles navigating the tunnel on their own without, you know, any kind of uh, uh, supervision. Now, obviously, truck drivers are professionals. People driving cars are, you know, morons Idiots. usually. Yeah, yeah, you still don't, either way, you don't really have to have any, like, specific training to use a tunnel. They don't stop you before you go in, like, okay, where's your tunnel license? Well, the English, actually, I'm sure, are working on it. A- after <laughs> today's incident, they did put in some uh, precautions huh. like that in the tunnel we're talking about. Um, the, but, as, as, as an English woman, this appeals to my heart of asking people whether they have a license for the activity <laughs> they're about to conduct. Oi! You have a license. You have a license for that tunnel. <laughs> that subterranean traversal. You got a license for that. But generally speaking, when you build a tunnel that's designed nice not for a nice clean electric train, not for a boat, not for an electric bus, but for cars and trucks that run on diesel and gasoline, it complicates things a lot because you need massive amounts of ventilation and you need like all kinds of safety systems because at any point Someone could take a hard ride into a wall and burst into flames and kill everyone, right? And they will do that. They love doing it. Yes. It's, it's everyone's favorite thing to do in a tunnel, is they just crash into a wall just, and explode. You guys remember cruising Exotica? It's kind of like that. Yes. <laughs> um, now, with that in mind, let's talk about transporting goods from Italy to France and vice versa. Hey, you want to put that shit on a mule and like haul it way up over the Alps? Slow that's, down, Hannibal. <laughs> that's what you had to do for most of recorded human history. 
yeah. right? Guy in a big like wool cape and an alpenstock, and he like you know leads those mules with all the also parts or whatever you want to you know deliver, uh, and that that's it. That's it. You know. Yeah, yeah. They go through like really gnarly mountain passes and all that stuff. Um, now by the mid 19th century, we had railroads, right? Mm. And the railroads got into like the foothills of the Alps and fairly well up, uh, river valleys, right? But they didn't, they didn't quite, qu- didn't quite cross them. Um, mm. you know, so the railroad would end where it ended and you take everything out of the box cars and you put it on mules and then you mule it over the mountain and you put it back on a train on the other side, Right. And, you know, in, in, in the summer, okay, you can put them on like carts in the winter. Sometimes you could put them on sleds, but a lot of times the mountain pass was just closed. You know, Mm. you could, you couldn't ship things in the winter. Right. Sure. Now in the late 1800s, several, several major railroads were finally driven through the Alps. Right. So you had the line from Turin to Mondain, which is somewhere over here that went on to, uh, uh, Chambéry and Grenoble, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> cool. I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce yeah, this. To, to just, Cham- just, to sh- just. Sh- the thing is, every every place name that you pronounce ends with like West Virginia after it. Chambéry, West Virginia, Grenoble, West Virginia. Yeah. Um. So this yeah. was opened in 1871. This is a good double track electrified line. It wasn't electrified when it opened, but it was electrified by like 1900. And- Ten or something. Well, this like is that. this is something know. very helpful to SBB, the Swiss Railroad, is that uh, there's fuck all coal in Switzerland, uh, yes. which means you can either do like a a wood burning steam engine, which they tried for a bit, mm-hmm. uh, or you can electrify once electrification's a thing, and that's what they did very early. Yeah, and uh, well, during coal shortages in World War II, they actually took some of their steam engines because they didn't have any access to coal. And they just added electric resistance heaters in the uh, firebox. Hell, and put a yes. pantograph on top. <laughs> that rules. That's uh, that's your that's your that's poor man's electric war- locomotive. <laughs> <It's> engineering. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you had the line along the coast that went from Mar- uh, Marseille to uh, uh, Venta Miglia. Venta Miglia. Sure. I don't. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Venta, 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 Venta Miglia. Yeah. Venta Miglia. Okay. 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 And that goes through Monaco, right? Yep. So that's a, that was yep. another option. That was opened in 1872. This was another good double track main line. And then the the third line was uh, Turin to Nice. Right, hey, you got was, both of those right. Yeah, well, those mm-hmm. are the easy ones. Um, and that was uh, that one took a long time to build because it was uh, it was built oh. during World War One. Oh, when the two countries were fighting each other. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Don't so let actually, that get a lot of the capital. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, they were still building it because they assumed, I guess, well, after the war, you know, we'll probably, we'll probably be fine, right? You know. Yeah, but, but it's like uh, the it's like the, the 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 end of the transcontinental railroad when the two guys meet each other, but they were both trying to kill each other with hammers. <laughs> yeah. A result of this is the tender line, is what it's called. Um, oh, a lot of the engineering tender. works. A lot of the engineering works have built-in fortifications. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so like the tunnel will have like... You never know when like, you're going to need them, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the Just tu- signals uh, shooting at each other. The, the, the tunnel will have like, uh, you know, some, uh, some like um, slits for firing guns out of right next to the portal, <laughs> you know. Um, so this was, this was not finished until 1928, though. Um, and it was... Just in time for there never to be another war between France and Italy. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so, and that was that was built to a much lower standard than either of the other lines, also. But the um, the line up here from uh, Turin to Mundane was the uh, the busiest one, right? Because it's the most direct route hmm. uh, to like Lyon and onto Paris and places like that. Yeah, I, I right? think Turin's the largest city in this in this map here. Yeah, Turin is, uh, and that's where they make all the stuff. Is Turin. Yeah. Um, shrouds, you know. famously. <laughs> yes. Shrouds, fiats. fiats. Uh, shrouds of fiats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. Jesus, but he's three-wheeling uh, a Fiat, an old-school Fiat 500. Yeah, you have well, like I, a miraculous Topolino. Well, I mean, in the Cars universe, what kind of car would Jesus be? That's a real question. Um, uh, an absolutely nuked-out Yugo. 
I, I think the answer is there's like schisms and fights over what kind of car people believe no. Jesus no. to have Nuked been. That makes a lot go. of sense, actually. Yeah. Nuked out you go. Well, mm. I don't know if there's um I don't know if there's any cars indigenous to the Middle East. You um, might say. I think I there's think like a couple hand. of like Turkish brands, but mm. if you count them, maybe. Uh, yeah, the, I guess that would make sense. Mm. But I don't know if you, you cars of Mesopotamia. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, the, the question of what an, like an Aramaic car would be—that's yeah. quite vexed. Well, the I think. Aramaic, obviously. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um. Anyway, so this is a very direct route over the mountains, uh, for its time. But mm. after World War II, we invented a new concept, which is. Let's get rid of all these old-fashioned electric trains and replace them with nice new shiny diesel trucks for moving everything. Oh, totally. Uh, right? Europe. Um, yeah. So, but that means you need new road routes over the Alps. Because while the roads had been improved, they were still pretty bad. Sure. Right? As here's, uh, here's part of the mountain pass that follows roughly the same route as the tunnel we're about to discuss. You start Ooh. down the mountain. That looks no. very fun to drive if yeah, you're not no. in any hurry and you're not driving yeah. a massive truck. Exactly, yeah. right? And this this uh this sort of switchback road. It's a hill road, climb, but uh hill descent. <laughs> yeah, this, this sort of mm. switchback road is like all over these passes that you had to take and you had, you know, your 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 shitty Citron truck or whatever uh with loaded with like I don't know, a bunch of like and pigs or something. Sure. Um yeah, and then and then you have to like drive up this mountain, and the engine like stalls out at like twenty five miles an hour or something, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it takes you three hours to go, um, you know, five miles horizontally and half a mile vertically. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so this is this the, these passes are slow. They were unreliable. You didn't really have snow removal, so they were closed in the winter. They were impassable to motor vehicles. Uh, you have to ship things like trains, the ship things by train, and this this was a problem because again, in the twentieth century, we had a goal to ship everything by truck, right? So plans were developed for the longest road tunnel the world had ever seen, oh, okay. yeah. directly through Mont Blanc. Isn't Mont Blanc this massive heap of granite? Yes. Yes. Here's some guys surveying on the top of it. Oh, hell yeah. The tunnel. Yeah, you'd, you'd climb cool the mountain. Job. That is kind of a cool job. Surveying is kind of a cool job, except when, we got a safety when you're third getting shot today. at. Hmm. <laughs> um, I never read ahead to the safety third, so it comes as a total well, surprise to me. It's not, it's not today's today, safety third, though. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so, the Mont Blanc crossing would be more northerly than any of the existing railways that went into France. Right, and it would offer a more direct route, not only to France but also destinations like Geneva. It would bring Milan about a hundred kilometers closer to the French border by road as well. Right, so in 1946, Count Dino Laura Totino. Wow, <laughs> that's a, that's children's television. You made that up. Know, that's not real. Dino Laura Totino decided the tunnel would be a good idea, and he just started digging. Right. Uh, the they French call me town, Dino the Digger. Yeah. The French town of Shimoni. It's Shimoni, right? Sure. Why not? It's probably okay. like Cheminois, but who cares, dude? I I don't know. The, the Chamonix? Bizarre. Chamonix. Jesus Christ. I wasn't right. looking. Well, you know, the, 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 the fucking uh, the mansion over in Fairmount Park is called Shimoni. So, and it's spelled the same way. <laughs> yeah. Alice. Yeah. Alice. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah, excuse Alice. me. Yeah, yeah. excuse me. Anyway. You. Okay, Shamanu. Right. Shamana. Sh Shamalama Ding Dong, if you will. Yes. Mm -hmm. They granted him room for surveying the tunnel portal on the other side. The Italian government found out he was digging the tunnel and he, they shut down the whole operation. Why? Hey, After quit that. Had, quit it. Quit it. Yeah, You're not allowed yeah, to do that. Quit that. <laughs> no, that's, it's about, our job to do nothing. After about 260 meters of tunnel had been bored, right? But you know, the desire for this tunnel had been proven, right? People wanted to drive their car through the mountain and crash into the wall and die in a fire, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. An irrepressible human instinct. Yeah. Yes. It's like going well, in a cave. Well, baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
to be like, well, I don't want to like slam my car into this wall at 100 miles an hour, but... But. <laughs> Unless. So, France and Italy conceptually agreed to fund and construct the tunnel in 1949. The tunnel was, the tunnel companies were chartered formally in 1953. Construction didn't begin until 1959. Some of the initial plans called for two separate tubes but ultimately the design chosen had a single tube with two lanes. Oh, good. Hmm. That, that so, seems more yeah, that, that, adept that way, at preventing any, disasters. Any, any wheel movement in either direction, instant death. Instant death. Head it on is collision. more efficient at killing people, yes. I yeah. was just thinking that. You can really spice up your uh, fatality count. Absolutely. Absolutely. You see a car coming towards you you don't like the look of, just y yank that shit to the left and uh, both of you die. Yes, instantly. I'm Great. so sick of seeing Porsche Cayennes! Right to the, <laughs> right to the wall I go. The Mont Blanc Tunnel was to be 11 kilometers long. At its deepest point, it would be 2.5 kilometers under the top of the mountain. This was the deepest tunnel in the world until the Goddard Base Tunnel opened in 2016. Yeah, don't, don't be in there thinking about the fact that you have 2.5 kilometers of granite over your head. Thank you, don't Alice. All, all that granite is, you got to think, all that granite is actually keeping the rest of the granite from falling on you. Hey, oh, that's don't true. take your life yeah. for granite, I yeah. think is what you meant to say. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Liam. on fire today, bro. I ate halal <laughs> for lunch, I feel great. I almost did that. Do you know how um, much it costs near me now? Seven goddamn dollars. Seven dollars at the halal it's getting, truck? Getting, yes. getting closer to making you both Muslim. <laughs> Do I get I did, a... Di I, $7 we used, to is, eat, is absurd. we used to eat a lot more halal food than we do now. We used to go down to the halal truck outside the, uh, the AICP Islamic Center like every single day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> My favorite was during Ramadan when they, when they just opened it late, but still because we live in West Philly, we were now also observing the fast. Yeah, basically, because they didn't <laughs> open the truck until like 11. It's like how having a vegetarian girlfriend makes you vegetarian too, by default. You know, yes. you, you live around enough Muslims and eventually you, uh, you're fasting. Exactly. I didn't believe that was true until our roommate literally started dating a vegan girl and himself went from meat-loving schlub to vegetarian schlub. Oh yeah, it happens. Yeah. It happens. Yep. They'll do that to you. So, the main part of this tunnel was blasted, right? There was a huge drilling machine on rails. You see here, a called, guy like ladling up a dynamite to Mont Blanc, and they're like, "Are you going to build the tunnel?" He's like, "No, I just hate this fucking thing." So anyway, <laughs> I started blasting. Yeah, <laughs> this uh, huge drilling machine named Jumbo. Right, prepare to meet Jumbo. If yeah. it was fr if it was French, it probably would have been like Jumbo or some Jumbo. shit like that. Jumbo. Ridiculous. Yeah, we call so, it Jim um, Bob for short. They they'd roll this thing up to the face of the rock. They drill holes in the uh, in the rock, and you put sticks of dynamite in there, and then you roll it away, and you blow up the dynamite, you clear away the rubble, you put down more rails, you repeat this process until you get through the whole, whole uh, mountain, right? Hmm. They used about 1,200 tons of TMT to uh, bore the whole tunnel, right? Sure. Um, now, during the construction, about 23 guys died. Including three in an avalanche that hit the Italian no work thanks. camp. Oof. Yeah. I mean, this is like, that's the thing about the Alps. You can just die in an avalanche constantly, all the time. It's like the deadliest front of World War I because, like, a mountain just falls on you. That's what happens when you use artillery on, the, on, the, on a mountain. Hmm. Well, maybe you could, like, shoot artillery at the enemy and have an avalanche bury them. I and believe then also that, that bury has you. been done. Yeah. You got it. Uh, the phrase "danger close" comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is one of the portals. I don't remember which one. You can see all the tiny narrow gauge trains they use to carry the spoil away. Um, I love a tiny a, narrow gauge train. Here's a, here's a we view inside the tunnel. You can see this is a, it has a very large cross section. Uh, you have your two narrow gauge tracks in here. You have your big ventilation tubes. Because that's that's always the problem with supplying uh, with, with, when, you're, when you're building a tunnel, is mm. you got to supply fresh air and you got to get rid of the bad air. Um, you know, so you need lots and lots of uh, ventilation while you're building it. Um, and then, well, also after it's finished, if it's a road tunnel, that road tunnel, then you definitely need lots of ventilation. Yeah, um, so people don't die. Exactly. 
It's very, it's, it's a very difficult process and you're only making it harder on yourself by trying to put fucking cars in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to drive my, uh, just thinking about my own death every 30 meters, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just thinking so on, about it. On August 14th, 1962, they hold through, right? Um, you know, and that is uh, it really two, calling hole through? <laughs> yeah, you hold through. <laughs> That's gross. Um, nice. I, I mean, I, like I said, this is a very arousing podcast. So, uh, mm, th- just in this general, here are the workers uh, clambering over the pile of spoil from the last uh, explosion. Uh, you can see, you know, the the two the two sides of the tunnel were out of plumb by thirteen centimeters. Wow, right? that, that's not bad. not bad for a, you uh, know under a big fucking mountain. Oh yeah, um, and then you know the workmen celebrated the exchange flags. You know, then they start fitting out the work, uh, fitting out the tunnel, right? For guidance. Yes. Uh, here, here you can see some of the dignitaries taking the shitty little train to the uh, to to the place where they hold through. Some fantastic, right? like European post-war faces there. Oh yeah, everyone looks like Kissinger. Everyone looks like Kissinger. <laughs> they all have the glasses, and that's yeah. that. That's how you, you know, if you were a sort of a Europeanist, if you're been on the European project, that's how you had to look. Mm-hmm. What party are you? I'm a Christian Democrat. Oh, I'm also a Christian Democrat, but from a different country. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> when they fit out the tunnel, you can sort of see how it's arranged here. You have these three galleries underneath the main road surface, and then um, and these are for ventilation, um, mostly for ventilation, theoretically for evacuation, but we'll get to that later. Um, Uh-oh. But yeah, then the road surface is farther up. Right, uh, and there's a couple galleries that provided connections from the ventilation shaft to the main tunnel, but not too many. Right, hmm. and then your safety features on here: they carved niches into the wall every 600 meters that were fitted with fire doors. And if there was a fire, you went into those niches and you closed the door and you waited to be rescued. Yeah, you just waited out. Perfect. Exactly. And the doors were good for two hours of uh, fire. <laughs> That's not that. Uh, is that better than normal? Worse than like. That was better yeah, than normal at park. the time. <laughs> okay. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't know. I don't know much about tunnels. Yeah. I mean, it's better than fucking like self rescue or tunneling up through the mountain. So, right. This is true. Yeah. You can't really. In real life, you can't really Minecraft your way out of there by punching the rock, you know? Not with that goddamn mm. attitude. <laughs> you just staircase up, easy. Yeah. Um, here's, here's an image of, uh, I want to say, the French side of the tunnel. I uh, had this nice, fun canopy up here. Uh, still has this nice, fun canopy, actually. Right? Um, and here's some guys driving through the tunnel in their 1960s European cars. Oh, is that a fucking Citroen DS? Uh, where? Oh, you ju- uh, you jumped ahead a slide from me. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I see the nice alpha there. I do yeah, like that's the a alpha, nice yeah. alpha, yeah. Hell yeah. It's, it's an alpha van behind it, too. Oh, yes. I want one of those. Yeah. <laughs> oh, engine problems you can't even begin to <laughs> fathom. You can see uh, on the side here, here's one of the uh, traffic lights that they've used to stop traffic in an emergency. Also, not the tunnel is plenty wide enough for a car to turn around, but only if it's a 1960s European car. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> if, if you're in your comical little Italian van taking your various ingredients to market on the other side mm-hmm. of the Alps, you can do that fine. Yeah, no problem. There's a problem in the tunnel. Turn around. Uh, leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If if there's a fire, you just drive out. Hit the bricks, if you will. Yeah. Exactly. So, commemorative postcard from when the tunnel opened. I think that's kind of cool. I think yeah, that's neat. Fun. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Driving my fucking De Dion Bouton through, uh, through the Alps. So this is a, a momentous achievement in the field of shipping everything by truck. And getting, <laughs> right. yeah, and getting rid of, you know, these if, uh, uh, obsolete electric trains, right? Um, this is something that would never come back to haunt civilization. Um, well, thank you for that. Very prescient of, of you, Roz. Hmm. The, uh, the Mont Blanc Tunnel soon became home to nearly a third of trade 
by value, not by volume or by weight. <laughs> this this is a theme for you. <laughs> yes. Just really realizing that trains are very good at transporting both value, but especially volume. Very good at yeah. I mean, you know, I, I know that you can easily have a truckload of electronics that is more valuable than like three trains of coal. Yeah, um, who, who would win? <laughs> like one van full of TVs, or a, you know, a six-mile-long train full of aggregate that's worth five dollars plus parts and labor. <laughs> uh, yes. Probably the aggregate TVs are really cheap now. Nah, eh, well, but we got to figure true. out a way to make TVs out of aggregate. That that's the next frontier. Do be, get on that Flintstone shit, you know? That's a good point. Yeah. Well, you need you need uh you need you need uh recruit some animals uh, <laughs> with, that make snarky comments. Yeah, that's true. That it's a living. Yeah, yeah. totally. So the, the, this was uh, soon home to a third of trade by value between France and Italy, right? And operated without incident for many years, right? Um, well, there were some incidents. There were a couple minor fires in the tunnel, but they were always extinguished on the spot by uh, truck drivers, right? Hmm. Um, and you had a very complex scheme for monitoring the tunnel in which there were separate French and Italian organizations that monitored their respective size of the tunnel. This sounds familiar from the Channel Tunnel <laughs> yes. Fire episode. <laughs> but wait a second, the Channel Tunnel Fire was after this. Are you saying we didn't learn from history at all? Alice, guess what? Well, you know... You know... No. Um, mm. We are a dumb species. Right, so you didn't have... You, you had those several small fires, but nothing serious happened. There were some safety improvements that were carried out in 1990. They added additional places of refuge. They added CCTV cameras. They put big changeable signs on each end of the tunnel. Um, you know, and then, uh, and then they upgraded- Changed them round to you are now entering yeah. Italy on the French side for mm. laughs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and they upgraded- They're the guy all that painted Welcome to Cleveland uh, on his house in Cincinnati. Hmm. <laughs> And then they uh, they upgraded the fire doors on the uh, niches on the wall to a whopping four hour fire rating. Oh yeah, now you're twice as safe. You can just hang out. You can watch two like long movies in there. They also installed a sprinkler system and two separate automated fire detection systems. All right, wow. all right. Feeling feeling yeah. safer and safer. I'm in my fire refuge. I'm watching Avengers Endgame. I can finish yes. the whole thing before I die. Um, yeah, no, I, I feel good about this. Now, these weren't two separate, contiguous fire detection systems. It was just that the French and Italians used different systems for their half of the tunnel. Oh, okay. Sure. They should they should put a border post in the middle of it with that attitude. Just just for exactly. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I'm the one Italian guy who has to like raise and lower this barrier for every car and truck that comes through. I think the French used an electric system and the Italians used a system that was Diesel. gas and tubes. <laughs> uh, hey, yeah. I wish I wasn't right. If it catches <laughs> fire, then you know there's a fire. As it turns out, flammable <laughs> and inflammable mean the same thing. <laughs> Um, and you had a lot of disputes uh, over capital improvements to the tunnel in general between the French and the Italians as to who was supposed to pay for it. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, this is, um, th this is really managed as two separate tunnels that happen to be connected to each other. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, there's a little tiny join in the middle where it's just like bare rock and you just like, you know, trip over that bit. It's like, when you cross the, it's like when you cross the border between like, um, uh, what you call it? Really, any state and any other state, and there's sudden disrepancy in the pavement. Um, mm, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pennsylvania, any other state? Yep. I, th I think we should we should investigate more comical ways of doing this. I think we should have a border post on a long staircase, and then the stairs change in height at the exact border, so you just fall flat on your face <laughs> when you hit the border. <laughs> Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. 
Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. So, March 24th, 1999. Oh, no. Uh, oh, boy. Gilbert de Grave. Oh, boy. Was driving a Volvo FH12 semi. That's, uh, that's this. Oh no! This is an FH16. Excuse Close me. Close enough. Same. Well, same so I wanted to use a Volvo 240 I, for this slide. So I, I, I don't love that you're using a guy's name. You know, like <laughs> that. That's generally a worse sign <laughs> even than a date. Yeah. He was driving it not with a trailer full of logs like this shows. He had a refrigerator trailer full of huh. twelve tons of flour, which doesn't need to be refrigerated, and yeah, nine but... tons of margarine, which does. I mean, um, <laughs> listen, it's, it's a cold trailer. That's the opposite of fire. That's a good point, yeah. Um, and he was bound for Italy, mm. right? He entered the tunnel from the French side, and he got nearly halfway through the tunnel before drivers started waving and flashing lights at him. And he figured out pretty soon why. The truck was on fire. Uh, I'm accidentally doing some metal shit. I'm driving a truck that's still on fire. I mean, if you're halfway through, that's the point at which you should just floor it, right? I, like, it was only a little bit on fire at this point. It was really yeah, just, just white smoke it. coming just like out as, of the a, cab. as a treat. Yeah. Well, just that's, that's an interesting it. one. Mm. I, 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 the more I read about this, the more I wonder if he had just kept driving, would the oh. fire have spread as quickly? Mm. Um, interesting. Yeah, I, 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 I have no idea. Um, I'm not, I'm not a fire safety expert, but oh, you no. know, I, but anyway, what he wound up doing, he stopped the truck, he got out his fire extinguisher, he started trying to fight the fire. Yeah, and this is a big truck. Yeah. Like, even if you like, uh, you pull over or whatever, you're still blocking one lane. Like, yes, right. Um, now, once he stopped and he got the fire extinguisher out. The fire suddenly grew much bigger very quickly, um, uh -oh. which I would suspect is because of paralysis, right? You know, hmm. off-gassing from various heated materials in the truck. Suddenly, instead of being swept away by the air current, um, they are now just accumulating. The fire gets a whole lot bigger, a whole lot faster. That's, that's my theory as to maybe if he kept going, this wouldn't have happened. But again, hmm. I'm not qualified to make a definitive statement yeah. there. And either way, uh, make sure you know how to uh, operate a fire extinguisher. You want to use the yeah. PASS acronym. You pull the pin, you aim at the fire, the base of the fire, and you sweep and you keep going until it's out or you don't have a fire extinguisher anymore. Yes. In which case, uh, run for it. Yeah. There's no so, shame in running for it. Throw the mm -hmm. empty fire extinguisher at the fire to try and disorient it and then run <laughs> for the exit. <laughs> so anyway, when the flames got much bigger, um, he was like, well, I, I can't do shit about this. And he ran away towards the Italian side of the, of the tunnel. Okay. Um, and he, ke he kept running and he, he got out of the tunnel. Um, I mean, that's, that's good yeah. cardio. Yeah, I that's mean, pretty good cardio that, right there. You, also, you're doing like also, what, would, minimum uh, 1.2K? Yeah, I would run for it. Yeah. It was, uh, it was an 11 kilometer tunnel. He was smack dab in the middle oh, of it. Oh, Jesus. Probably, wow. Yeah. Okay. He did a full like 5K off of n like a standing start. I mean, with mm -hmm. adrenaline going, but still, that's, that's yeah. pretty good. That's not bad. So there were 18 trucks and 10 cars stuck behind this now out of control fire, right? On the French side. Mm. Um, and and on more the still coming in behind uh, it? Uh, at this moment, yes. Great. Uh, um, yeah. But those were, th that's what, those are the vehicles that get wound up being found at the end. Um, oh, oh, no. Don't like that. <laughs> there are a the couple breadstick vehicles, that's just like popping yeah. out of the oven a little bit. There are a couple vehicles who managed to do a three-point turn and drive out of the tunnel. A couple vehicles coming from the Italian side just drive right past the fire, don't stop. Um, Hell yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but most of the vehicles behind the truck, they stayed in place. You know, it's like, all right, roll up the windows. Let's wait for the authorities to do something about this, right? Uh, which proved to be a bad idea. Yeah, but nobody tells you any different. Like, this again, they don't, they don't give you any training if you're just driving a car. They're just like, yeah, all right, have a safe, safe trip. You know? And all of the trucks can't get out. Yeah. Um, they can't turn around at all. They're stuck in there. Mm -hmm. Now, the Mont Blanc Tunnel, situated as it is under a mountain, frequently experiences conditions where the weather on one side of the tunnel is significantly different from the weather on the other side of the tunnel. Oh, dear. And this results in sustained airflow in one direction through the tunnel, which today was towards France. Right? Good. You just have a big, like, chimney going. In addition, the Italians decided the thing to do for this fire, because at this point, we're a couple minutes after the fire starts, the Italians find out about the fire, the French find out slightly sooner. Um, two separate Italians, control rooms full of guys gesticulating control. and yelling exactly. at each other. Yes. Yes, and, and they are, they, they, the Italians decide, we need to get this smoke out of the tunnel, so they kick on the ventilation system and really start pushing air into the tunnel as much as possible from the Italian side, right? Yeah, in order to intimidate the fire by giving it too much air. Yes. <laughs> Sorry I took the fire, yes. That, that, that's how that works. Mm -hmm. um, now, a major fire in a tunnel, that's pretty bad, right? Oh, sure. But if you have a major fire in a tunnel with artificial ventilation providing more air to the fire, that turns out to be much worse. So one of the things the ventilation system wound up doing is they de-stratified the, um, the smoke, right? Ordinarily, you know, the smoke would rise to the top of the tunnel, sort of flow out that way. Um, because of the airflow, the smoke now filled the full cross-section of the tunnel, right? <laughs> Oh, okay. So yeah. it's just like, it's just mortal in the, the whole length. Oh yeah. The whole, the whole length of the tunnel, from, from the middle of the tunnel towards the French side, it's just all smoke, right? The smoke is mainly composed of carbon monoxide and cyanide. Ah, our yeah. old friend, it keeps showing up in like big structure fires for some reason. Funny how that oh, works. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh. That that old HCN. It turns out it's relatively easy to make in a lot I've of combustion scenarios. Got a lot of shit scenarios. that like <laughs> off gases cyanide uh, when it's on fire. Meanwhile, I'm just thinking of like French truck driver rolling down the window and like lighting a Gauloise off the air. <laughs> <laughs> the fire grew extremely quickly. It reached temperatures estimated at 1,000 degrees Celsius or 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. Mm hmm. Um, now, firefighters were dispatched from the French side of the tunnel almost immediately, and they arrived at the scene, or close to the scene, just as the power went out in the tunnel. Oh, boy. Now, they're in total darkness, they're in very thick smoke, and the firefighters found themselves blockaded in the tunnel by stopped vehicles. So they can't really get close enough to the fire to fight it, and they can't turn their fire engines around. Mm -hmm. um, so. They, they can't do shit. They wind up abandoning the fire trucks and seeking refuge in one of the fireproof niches along the walls of the tunnel, right? So 15 of them crammed into two of the niches, right? Oh, Jesus. They have time to get, like, breathing apparatus on, or are they just raw dogging it? I was not raw able dogging. to figure that out, but I think they had breathing apparatuses. Ba based Jesus on Christ, I hope later so. events, I would assume they had them. Um, mm, yeah. Not like that. You don't want to leave those in the truck, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Some of the some of the civilians also managed to cram themselves into the fireproof cubicles, but the problem is they were they were relatively fireproof, but they were not smokeproof, right? Oh, uh, don't like that. Yeah. So this is uh, so you know you get in there and then there's this horrible smoke sort of drifting in under the you know it's not good. Mm. We're still only minutes after the fire started. Yeah, and you're in there with the firefighters, so you're like, oh, we're going to be fine. You know, we're, we're saved. Uh, no. Mm. no. <laughs> Anyone who was in a car on the French side at this point uh, had found their cars had stalled out for lack of oxygen, right? So they can't, they can't drive out of the tunnel at this point. A couple of them tried to escape on foot, and they all died. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. The firefighters who were cooped up in the cubicle, they reported hearing 
popping sounds from the tires being uh, exploded by burning fuel. They heard cars, fuel tanks exploding. The Italians were uh, absolutely apocalyptic. Oh yeah, the Italians were still pumping air in, and they hadn't managed to get their fire crew into the tunnel yet, right? Um, yeah, I mean, all of them are on like mandatory nine week vacation because they're all in like unions. Exactly, they're all PCI right? guys. <laughs> No, they're, they're all busy like getting held up by 20 simultaneous Operation Gladio attacks. Yeah, they also they got word of the fire later than the French did, because their side of the fire protection system um, had been partially switched off. Why? Because it, because, given, because it was given, NATO... too, it was given <laughs> too many false positives. Because oh, NATO okay. had been told that Gaddafi was going to be driving through the tunnel that day, uh, things of this nature. Again, it was it was unclear to me exactly when they found out the fire was happening. Right, um, yeah, two French, weeks after the French firefighters are still oh, in, the, in the in the niches, and they still have radio contact with the French side, not the Italian side. They use a different radio frequency. <laughs> um, <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> it's the same radio frequency, but there's a slight accent on one of the numbers. Yes. My favorite thing about humanity is we just never learn from our mistakes. Yes. We please refuse to as a species. Is, please note this is a photo of the Goddard Tunnel fire and not of the tunnel fire we're talking about because there's no photos of that happening. But, you know, a representation of fire in a combined space. Yeah, yeah. Everything else I could find for this was like more obvious demonstrations where it's like a single car parked perfectly in the middle. Um, yeah. Th th this gives you some more idea of, I think, the like wall of flame effect. Yeah. Uh, so j just imagine that for several kilometers, and you're like off to the side of this in a tiny little fucking smoking room. Um, now the fire at this point is spreading to other vehicles in the tunnel. You know, the cars, the trucks, um, other people in there are long dead by now. Mm -hmm. um, basically, yeah, everyone stuff was that's like catching light out of sympathy. Yeah. Um, yeah, because all the all the cars and trucks behind the burning truck it all stopped very close together. Mm. Um, you know, there's a big traffic jam in there, full of dead people, and um, the worst you know, side. So, yeah, exactly. You know, because you know they're not going to move. Um, <laughs> Considerate yeah, bastards. Yeah, no matter how much you honk at them. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, at this point. Uh, the 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 fire's reaching other trucks, and they're also full of flammable cargo, right? Yeah. And the firefighters are still trapped in the niches behind the fire. Um, the Italians finally got their shit together, and their fire trucks arrived near the scene at eleven and eleven, right? On the Italian side of the tunnel, was completely free and clear of smoke. Hey, the ventilation works. It turns out it works pretty good for the Italians, it's, not so good for the French. It's making it France's problem. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, on the French Italian side, tradition. it looks like Satan's fucking urethra, but on the Italian mm -hmm. side, you're like sunbathing off of the nice mm -hmm. radiant heat of this. <laughs> Hey Giuseppe, you're blocking my light. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the like reflectors I out. That show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Italian firefighters are all like putting sun cream on each other's backs. <laughs> so, so they were able to get close to the fire, but the the fire was so hot at this point they couldn't get close enough to actually fight the fire. They were forced to retreat as well, and this was not great if you were say a trapped French firefighter in a niche, right? Mm. But they were still alive, and they had radio contact, right? And they, they, the, the French uh, initiated what they called Plan Rouge. Oh, I would right? love to initiate uh, Plan, Plan Rouge. Rouge. Yeah. Uh, this is also around the time when it's rumored that an Italian man, who was uh, sort of a tunnel patrol officer, uh, named Pierluccio Spadino <laughs> Tinazzi, right? No, he wasn't. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I would call him Spadino because he's very thin. Like, uh, Spadino is Italian for rapier, right? Uh, -huh. uh He was equipped with the self-contained breathing apparatus, and he rode his motorcycle in and out of the French side of the tunnel to repeatedly save victims from the fire. That's the rumor. Uh, in actuality, what likely happened is he rode in once, he managed to pull a guy out of a truck and shove him into a fireproof niche. 
uh, and and then he died. Oh. Uh, and then the guy oh. who shoved in the he shoved in the niche also died. Oh, uh, yeah. You don't you don't want to <laughs> be an amateur rescuer, I don't think. Unwise. Like, yeah. Yeah. So it's one o'clock now. The fire is still completely out of control. Plan Rouge is in effect. There's specialized confined space rescue fire companies come in from Switzerland and from Lyon. Right? Hell yes. And they arrived to mount a rescue effort to get the firefighters and anyone else trapped in one of the fire niches out. They enter the tunnel by way of a ventilation shaft under the roadway. And they find an exit close to the fire and start searching the fire niches. That's this like the worst thing I can imagine is like, oh, you have to climb through this ventilation shaft. It's like a thousand degrees, like immediately yeah. above you, no visibility. Yes. Uh, and you're oh, looking for oh, a bunch Paul. of guys who are probably dead already. Yeah. yeah. And they, um, it takes them until four, uh, four o'clock to reach the niche where the firefighters were. And they were all still alive. How the barely. fuck? I, yeah, barely. I, th these things are right. rated for like four hours total. They've been in there for like getting on for like eight, right? Uh, they've been in for five hours at this point. Ah, uh, okay, okay. They were all re rescued alive, but in serious condition, and the fire chief later died in the hospital. Mm. Um, now, I assume they must have had breathing apparatus because no civilians were rescued alive. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Anyone on the French side who didn't immediately get out was killed. Um, mostly in the first 15 minutes of the fire. Um, now, if everyone on the Italian side survived, though. So... I mean, yeah. <laughs> I get, I, I, he's doing a fantastic job of making it France's problem. Yes. And, I mean, as, as far as I'm concerned, if you're an Italian patriot, an Italian nationalist, this is a big success for you. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the yeah no uh, not a bug system working as intended <laughs> yeah everything's fine yeah so, yeah we we found out later than they did and we still managed to make it their problem <laughs> so the fire in the meantime was completely uncontrolled right and even once active ventilation was shut down the shape of the tunnel effectively acted as a chimney right because there's sort of um the the tunnel sort of goes on like a relatively level grade from uh the french side uh and then it, in the middle it sort of drops down to the italian side which is also a tree color so there's actually no difference between these two flags i i drew <laughs> um, <laughs> don't you have colors on the john madden yeah i could but then i would get the colors in the wrong order probably it would be embarrassing <laughs> 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 So, so the fire was right in the middle at that grade change, right? Mm. And so this acts as a chimney from the Italian side, drawing fresh air up into the fire and then ventilating out towards France, right? <sighs> yep. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, they're relatively certain that no one is alive in the tunnel. Well, you, um, you look at it, you're like, um, yeah, you're, you know, no, people are dead. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Um, and so they make the decision, we'll let the fire burn itself out. Great, chill. 56 hours later, the fire went out. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no thanks. That's a lot of, like, uh, burning trucks. Yes. You know? It took another five days for the tunnel to cool down enough for anyone to go in and inspect the damage. Italians on their own just putting, like, fucking, like, pizza stones in there to heat them up. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I I will not stop doing anti-Italian racism on this episode oh, of the show, fine, I'm sorry. Jesus I... Christ. <laughs> so, in the aftermath, about 39 people have been killed in the disaster, all that on the seems... French side of the fire. <laughs> I, I mean, that's low, relatively speaking, yeah. right? For what yeah. a fucking, Ooh. like, disaster this is, Total and like, how show, apocalyptic yeah. it looks, too. Like... Uh, yeah, you know, I, I mean, you, you, you yeah. get that same number out of a big coach crash. This is true, yeah. Uh, the tunnel itself was a mess, right? It's full of molten metal, um, molten molten people. melted, melted trucks, uh, mm -hmm. no bodies, only bones. Oh, uh. yeah. And so, you know, the recovery effort starts after this, you know, they pull everything out. Now we got to figure out who do we blame, 
right? Everybody. Everybody, Everybody. sounds about right. Well, lots of people were sued. Uh, Gilbert de Grave, who was a Belgian, by the way. Of course uh, he fucking he, was. He was the first guy. He was the first guy. He was a highly flammable blackface yeah. the whole time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He, he was sued, um, I believe, later acquitted because he, he probably he did all he reasonably could. Um, That's fair. Yeah. I mean, like, he wasn't, like, negligent in, like, letting the truck catch on fire in the first place, I don't think. Yes. Um, Volvo was sued. Uh, The trucking company was sued. The French and Italian managers of the tunnel were sued. Regulators, the mayor of Shimoni. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm gonna stop pronouncing shit like Sheboygan, like you pronounce Shimoni, like, should be pronounced. Sheboygan? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Charborg. Now, uh, during the investigation, it came out that no joint fire drill had been conducted in the tunnel since at least 1990, and possibly not since the 1970s. Yeah, due to insane like European feuds, where they're like, "We're not talking to each other. We're not going to talk to each other. We're going to have separate fire drills." <laughs> uh, <laughs> With entirely separate philosophies of how to respond to the fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one fire crew gets to like the halfway line. There's a car on fire five feet over the line. They're like, nope, you gotta wait for nope, the other guys. No, 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 not, uh, not our problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's out of our jurisdiction. Um, I think the uh, the Italian company responsible for operating the tunnel wound up paying thirteen and a half million euros to a victims fund. Uh, one of the guys who wound up testifying. Was uh, Eduard Balladur, who was eventually Prime Minister of France, because um, he was in charge of the com- uh, company that operated the tunnel during the time they weren't conducting fire drills. Well, he must um, have done a pretty good job if they elected him anyway. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the French famous for you know it's fine. Well, he got <laughs> out of the, he got out of the company before uh, before the incident happened. So you ah, know. Uh, they wound up. Uh, Convicting Gerard Roncalli, who was head of the security of the tunnel. I mean, that's uh, not really a security mm. issue. Like, it wasn't on purpose. That's like a safety thing. I feel like there should be a, a sharper divide there, you know? They sent him to jail for six months and two years suspended. Um, Italian jail or French jail? Because Italian jail isn't real. Eh, uh, good question. That's not, that's not, not a not joke. Sure. That Italy has functionally done prison abolition for a lot of white-collar crimes, because what happens is, uh, if they don't fucking sentence you within a certain absurdly short period of time after it's alleged to have happened, you just fucking leave, you just go. And like most of the time it's house arrest anyway. This is what kept happening to, to friend of the show Silvio Berlusconi. Um, <laughs> you know what's weird? Which, he, he, was, he was Prime Minister of France before the tunnel fire, ninety three ah, to ninety five. Okay, Ooh. that's that's such a like thriller novel twist. Is like, oh, we have to we have to call the one witness we can't call the president. Yes, I mean, dun, dun, dun. It, it, everyone who was charged received you know suspended sentences, except mm. the one guy who got six months in jail. Wow. Um, and of course, we we begin the process of cleanup. Many shovels. Yeah. They, uh, Hopefully they, he proof shovels. It took three hmm. years to reopen the tunnel. Wow. <sighs> During which time all the trucks are going over those shitty roads again. Um, and they, they did a bunch of safety improvements, both uh, physical and organizational. They form a new organization to run the whole tunnel, right? As opposed to having competing Smart. French and Italian teams. Um, yeah, we give it all to the Swiss as like a neutral observer country. <laughs> Honestly, though, yeah, a bunch of UN blue helmets. We actually have uh, we have one Muslim with yeah. keeping the keys <laughs> to the tunnel. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It has to stay yeah. in that family. Yes. Um, one of the passages behi- beneath the roadway was now formally designated an evacuation route. Um, they also added a water supply line. They had better smoke extraction systems. Um, you know, and they installed more fireproof niches, but also actual formal entrances down into the evacuation tunnel. They had barriers in the tunnel. They got spaces for people to turn around. You know, they did a whole bunch of stuff and they installed a whole fire station in the middle of the tunnel. Oh, that's cool. 
smart. I want to work in the fire station and like the underground base. It has a special double ended fire truck. Oh, that rules. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you get stuck, you can just, you know, go to the other cab and leave. Right? Hell yes. <laughs> um, and the actual source of the fire was never determined. But sort of the consensus on the speculation is that um, someone threw a cigarette out of a passing car and it was sucked into the truck's air filter. Uh, Dude, you can't wait fucking like <laughs> 10 minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We love to, like, discard a cigarette carelessly, Learn don't we? Learn to dip. I yes. was always so, so paranoid about that when I smoked. I was always, like, you know, I, I will fucking, like, grind that shit to dust with my boot heel if I have to. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why you dip, folks. No, that yeah. too. Or, or buy snooze. Um, snooze uh, yeah. That's buy snooze.com. Very, very difficult to start a fire with dip. Not impossible, but Not much impossible. more difficult. Much more mm-hmm. difficult, yes. Yeah. Well... What the hell did we learn from this, other than make Don't you- smoke, apparently. Don't, don't yeah. smoke, don't split your critical infrastructure into a two separate, uh, different nationality organizations. Don't be French. Yes. Don't, don't, don't be French. Don't be French. Uh, be, don't be French, be Italian. Give yeah. Nice back, make it Nizza again. In fairness, all the people who died were trying to leave, uh, France. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, the tunnels, they're, they're a species of cave, as far as I'm concerned, and you yeah. should stay well clear of them. Especially if you're in a car full of gasoline. If, if you're just in a car, take the fucking switchback bullshit thing, take longer and just enjoy the view, you know? Yes. yes. Breathe, breathe mountain air, you know, look, have, have a nice time feeling like you're on the, the outside of like a milker packet or something. Exactly. God, I want a fucking bar of milker, actually. It's, yeah, anyway. Well, we have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Not to be That's- confused with the podcast Safety Third. There's a podcast Safety <laughs> there's Third. A, there's a podcast called Safety Third. We got to get a lawyer, dude. We got to oh, fucking okay. yeah. We got to get onto that we're shit. Com- that's gonna, that's gonna yeah. that's gonna establish precedent for Hussein to come after ten thousand uh, losses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, <laughs> can't, you can't have like an undefended <laughs> trademark. You got. We got to fucking make an example of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh My no, say- they uh, they they made it four episodes. Three three episodes. Oh well, I mean, listen. When, when making was content their last is episode, hard. Uh, I'm, I'm looking. Well, there's two. I think safety third podcasts. Oh, uh, they started after us. <laughs> Tell you that murder, murder, wow. murder, actionable threats. Wow. I hope they have a nice time. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hello, Roz, Alice, possible guest, and Liam. Mm. No guest today. No guest. We <laughs> shot them actually. What yeah. you should do, what you should do when you when you write a safety third, which by the way, you should do and you send to WTYPpod at gmail.com. Uh what you should do Recommended is you should sp- length about one page. Yeah, you, you should speculate, you should bet at the beginning whether or not you think there's gonna be a guest on that episode. Oh, I always uh, laugh at that. Whether they're like possible guests, guests, and then uh the ones that are just hello, but like don't mention the guest at all. Like, yeah, it's right. Yeah, yeah, I want you to, like, put a little fucking, like, roulette bet on um, whether you think there's going to be a guest or not, so we can make fun of you if you're wrong. <laughs> you don't get anything if you win, but you get made fun of if you're wrong. <laughs> that's right. That's, <laughs> that's the, the well, that's there's your, your problem, problem promise. promise. <laughs> well, there's your promise. Alice, we are in such sync today. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's great. Mm. We're fucking drift compatible, like that. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, hey. Shut up. My- my safety third story comes from when I was still a student, and I worked in a grocery store on the side. In my job, there's a little bit of everything. Stocking shelves, cashiering, back room work, and etc. The only thing I was expressly you forbidden to, to do, it's, it's fine. even though I was trained to do it, was to work the customer service desk. Never do it if you can avoid it, tell you that. In the words of the store's general manager, he'd rather have a cute young girl there than me. Ugh. You can already tell we got on great. Oh, I bet. (laughs) The story, however, is not from the customer service desk. It was from the back room. Here we had a machine that we called the Cardboard Monster. (laughs) 
<laughs> which was the machine a bailer, used to right? crush and shred cardboard boxes. I had so oh, much I need one of those, to I, be honest. Ba- bailers seem like the, the, honestly, they're just terrifying machines to me. You know? I got too much mail. I, I need this. I need a big industrial cardboard disposal. Um, <laughs> also, I'm, I'm very into the, the idea of like, well, you have, do you have it in the back? No, we have nothing in the back. The only thing we have in the back is the fucking threshing machine from Fargo. And we <laughs> yes. use that to destroy shipping boxes. <laughs> I have included a picture of such a machine. While this isn't the exact model that we had, this is the closest I could find, and it illustrates the story well enough. Looks cool as hell. The machine is about two and a half meters tall and has a hopper on top. Inside, there are two rollers with spikes to crush and shred the cardboard. Yeah, I need one of these. Those shreds were then dropped in a plastic bag, which, when full, was sent off with the rest of the recycling that we collected in our store. So I guess I guess this is different than a baler then because, okay. because of the plastic. Yeah. Yeah, but like still though, like I did, for my sins, like I unfortunately, despite my principles, I keep buying stuff off of Amazon because it's convenient and I'm a hypocrite. And like I, you, you know, tearing shit apart with your hands or using a box cutter, that's that's too much effort for me. I need I need yeah, is- the best the we Balkman machine and bow uh, <laughs> for milieu technique can offer me. This this is this is very much. I don't much like sounds, the way any of those words sounded. It's it <laughs> sounds to me like you know the 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 pits with the spikes in Vietnam. Oh, oh sticks. punji sticks. Yeah. Punji sticks. It's that, but for cardboard. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, we use a small anti-personnel mine to incapacitate <laughs> one of the cardboard boxes and halt the advance of the others. Yes, right, right. Of course, this machine worked well enough in reducing unwieldy boxes of cardboard into shreds. I stenciled on the side of my guitar, this machine works well enough in reducing unwieldy boxes of cardboard <laughs> into shreds. Yes. It had, really rolls just one, <laughs> had just one small flaw I could not detect when the bag was full. Instead, it would keep on grinding and grinding until eventually Same. enough Me enough too, like a middle school was, dance, bud. <laughs> <laughs> until enough cardboard was caught between the rollers to jam the device. It was at this point that someone had to climb into the hopper Remove oh, no. cardboard mm-hmm. from the rollers until they were unjammed. Oh no! And then nope. get the hell out of there. Um, Don't like that. Accidentally you gotta have a lockout tagout thing. But uh, yeah, this was a dangerous and physically heavy task. So only a few people were trained on how to do this. I was one of them. You joke about the cute young girls not being allowed to do that to preserve their cute young customer service desk faces. Yeah, because they're gonna get <laughs> fucking like uh, threshed off. Yeah, they're yes. gonna get mauled by the Balgman. Yes. To the store's credit, there was a decent safety procedure in place. Before climbing in, we'd have yeah, to press the emer- like, actually. We'd have to press the emergency stop button, then place our ladder over the button panel so everyone could see that there was someone That's in there. That's not a decent safety procedure. It should it be depowered. It should it is a yeah. safety procedure, it, I it, suppose. <laughs> it should not be powered and there should be some kind of a fucking like mechanical interlock between turning the thing on and uh, you being fucking in there. That's why I they call her I, I, spoil I, I sport think, Caldwell Kelly. That's I, right. I, I think the best safety procedure here would be to not have a system where people have to go into the hopper full of crushing devices. Yes, but if yeah. need be, it <laughs> should not be powered, yeah. you know? On top of that, another coworker would have to be standing outside of the machine to warn people that they shouldn't throw boxes in there. That last well, that's part better. was... That last part was often skipped when there was nobody available. Never mind. Forever. As, and here's another quote from the general manager: "Everyone knows what the ladder means anyway." Uh, I'm very angry now. You, yeah. you, you can, you can get one of those like little fucking like lockout tagout padlocks. You just loop it around something inconvenient so you can't fucking start the thing. They cost like two bucks. Yes, lockout tagout, folks. It's a very good idea. Um. Mm-hmm. The Saturday before Christmas, between 11 and 12 in the morning, was typically the busiest hour in the store for the whole year. It was one of those years at 11.30 when the cardboard monster jammed. I was on backroom duties that day. It was alone as everyone else was in the store, running around trying to get as much done as they could. I figured there would be nobody available to stand guard as this used to be a problem even on a quiet Saturday, let alone the one before Christmas. So I started the unjamming procedure. Don't I pressed do. the emergency oh, no, stop guy. button. 
I press the start button to verify the emergency stop button was working. Then I place my ladder over the button panel before climbing in. As I was removing cardboard from the monster's innards, I didn't notice a coworker had come up to the machine, threw in a few boxes, and pressed the start button. No, 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 no. <laughs> Fortunately for me, the emergency stop button still worked. Unfortunately for me, that coworker also noticed the emergency stop button was pressed, and they proceeded to reset it and press the start button again. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> okay. The only reason. So, how did you type this? Was this like uh, is like speech to text? Or? <laughs> the only reason I'm still alive to tell the story today is that I hadn't actually removed enough cardboard from the rollers yet to unjam them. <laughs> So the motor Ooh. activated, but the machine was still jammed. Ooh. I was always very aware that while I was arms deep in the device, I would have no chance of survival if the machine suddenly turned on. Oh, yeah. If it, if it did, First, the other person knows about it as they're getting sprayed with red stuff. Yes. If it did, the rollers would tear my arms clean off at my shoulder, followed by my head a few seconds later. A quick but guaranteed death. Not quick enough. No. So when I heard the motor activate, I panicked. As I yanked my arm from between the rollers in a desperate attempt to save my life, I snagged on one of the spikes, tearing my arm open from my elbow to just above my wrist. <laughs> Fortunately, this did not hit any arteries, but it was a serious enough wound regardless. Yeah. Enraged. Yeah, that's what I would say too. <laughs> yeah. Holy fuck, yeah. dude. <laughs> Holy fuck. Enraged. And so, so, so I poked my head over the top of the machine and I said, Excuse me, would you please desist from your current course of action yeah. <laughs> in a very nice, like, moderate tone of voice? Enraged, in pain, and adrenaline, adrenaline fueled, I shouted out, What the fuck are you doing, you fucking idiot? Close enough. As yeah. I poked my head above the hopper, I was staring right at the responsible co worker. The general manager. Death penalty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's right, death penalty. Yeah, honestly, though, yeah. While in the manager's office waiting for the ambulance, he wrote me up for cussing him out. Something worse than the death penalty. Can, can, can we give someone the death penalty twice? <laughs> can we, like, show you, you we're gonna a bit? Kill, we're gonna yeah. kill you, then resuscitate you, then kill you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get you get three hits of the defibrillator. Yeah. I signed the write-up with my bloody arm, making sure to get just enough blood on the signature field that it was essentially illegible. I was then taken to the hospital where my arm was disinfected, stitched up, and I was sent home with some painkillers and antibiotics. I really hope this yeah. isn't in a country where you have to pay for that. Oh boy. That night oh, it is. Uh, well, they mentioned they mentioned meters at the start, so I assume it's not Fingers the crossed. United States of America. Just <laughs> not on that arm. Yes. That night, I called my direct manager, who was not on shift that morning, and told her what happened. She was one of the rare good managers, and I heard a level of rage in her voice that I had not heard before or since in the six years of us working together. Nice. Good. I don't know what has transpired between her and the general manager, but the general manager called me back less than an hour later to very meekly apologize, <laughs> which was something I was sure he had never done before in his life. Nice. After that, it became a 100% mandatory uh, thing to have a coworker on guard duty when the cardboard monster jammed. That's still not enough. If there was no one available, it would have to wait. I also made sure to unplug the power to the machine whenever I had to unjam it again. There we go. Not taking my chances anymore, and fortunately nothing like this ever happened again during my time at that store. My arm recovered well, and other than a large scar and a good story, I suffered no permanent ill effects from this ordeal. Management are bastards. Yeah. And uh, scum. Yes. And... Uh, Liam, I think I'm an anarchist now. Do you have any like reading recommendations <laughs> oh, for yeah, me? I, I can yeah. give you some. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully, you know what? Uh, you go ahead. I don't mind making your job difficult. That manager uh, should be dragged into the public square and hanged upside down like Mussolini. Uh, I think that's in Malatesta, naming, actually. I'm not, I'm not naming the manager. No, that's this is totally not an actionable that's, threat. That's, that's, that's fine. It's kosher. Leave it. Uh, leave it. 
Mm-hmm. I hope or you enjoyed our, the our story. Our newly professional minted uh, professional editor to do it for me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the story and keep up the good work. Thank you. All the best. Martin with a J. Not a real name, but I, I forgive Dutch? you. Okay, Presumably well, I, Dutch, yeah. I, I take it all back. I now understand the manager's position. <laughs> <laughs> Shake hands with danger. Our it's next both episode. Thumbs. Yeah. Our next episode will be on the Boston Molasses disaster. Does anyone have That's commercials right. before we go? Kill James Bond, Trash Future, uh, Lions Led by Donkeys, uh, 10,000 Losses. Uh, Justin, I reinstalled Cities Skylines the other week, and I want you to know I'm never going to mention the word Franklin to you again. That game is a torment. Um, uh, I, I, I tell you what, there was just a big uh, scandal because one of the modders apparently um, uh, stuck a bunch of malware into a bunch of his mods, and uh, they just got oh, kicked shit. off of Steam, and then they returned, and then they got kicked off of Steam again. Oh Not shit! Before wait, republishing wait. all the shit. <laughs> Which one? I gotta unsubscribe from some modifications. Uh, I think it's uh it was like it was like um it, it was like a, a fake fixed version of the Harmony mod, I believe. Ah the actual clever. harmony mod is fine, but the fic the quote unquote fixed version was ah. uh I'll, I'll link you the article afterwards. So, so, so that's why my computer is mining Bitcoin suddenly. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. A Litecoin or whatever else. Uh, we do have. I do have one announcement before we go. Hell uh, yes. Uh, we got a very nice DM. Just so you know, this is the first person to have done it. You're not getting it. You're not getting a shout out. But I did <laughs> want to give a happy birthday to this person's boyfriend, whose name apparently is Dash Bong. Uh, if that's his <laughs> real name, I I yeah. I, we need I, to I see ID. We need to see some photo ID. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so happy birthday, Dash. Uh, get out of engineering. Yeah, yeah. We're always yeah. saying this. It's a good idea. Become start, a podcaster start a podcast. instead. Yeah. Start a podcast with your friends. It's easy, and so long as you don't mind people making fun of you for uh, yelling at you to do like better audio quality, it, you know, you'll never have to work that hard. All right. Well. That was a nice, decently short one, everyone. Yeah, I got yeah, go yeah, yeah, that was perfectly yeah. on time. I gotta go to bed, because this is my third podcast of the day. Excellent. Uh, uh, yeah, let's, uh, we'll coordinate, uh, we'll, we'll hop offline to coordinate. Yeah. Uh, that sounds good. Yeah. All right. All right, I will speak Shit. to you guys for the fucking cycle infrastructure one, which we're thinking Wednesday, right? Yes. Uh, Alright, perfect. Alright. All right. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh, stop the Zencaster. Yes.